Hi, welcome to Chapter 5, Merchandising Operations. So in the past chapters, we've been accounting for businesses that were providing services. Now we will be accounting for businesses that are selling goods. So they buy at goods and resell them for more than what they purchased them for. So this creates new accounting opportunities. So now we have inventory to account for, the cost of the goods that we purchased and resold. And we also have things like freight and discounts to account for. So that's what we'll be doing in, the, in this chapter. And these are the learning objectives. I'm going to skip over this. And you can read these yourself. Okay, learning objective one. We're going to describe merchandising operations and the two types of merchandise inventory systems. So who is a merchandiser? A merchandiser is a business that sells merchandise or goods to customers and there is usually an account called merchandise inventory. And then you have a wholesaler who buys goods from a manufacturer and sells them to retailers. And then a retailer buys merchandise from manufacturers or from a wholesaler and sells the goods to consumers. So the operating cycle, when does it begin? It begins when the company purchases inventory from an individual or a business, and this is called a vendor. And then after it purchases the inventory, the company will sell the inventory to a customer. And then finally, the company collects cash from the customers, and then the business can buy more inventory to sell. And so the process is a continuous cycle. So here is a visual representation of the operating cycle. The income statement of a merchandiser reports sales revenue rather than service revenue. So rather than calling it service revenue or fees earned in a merchandising business, it is called sales revenue. The expense that is usually the um, most expensive expense for a merchandising business is called the cost of merchandise sold or cost of goods sold. This is the cost of the good that they sold. Gross profit is the difference between sales revenue minus cost of goods sold. So that is your gross profit before you take out other expenses. Basically it shows how much you marked up the item that you sold. Operating expenses are going to be expenses other than cost of goods sold. So your salary expense, your utility expense, all of those expenses. So the difference in a merchandising business is that we have new accounts. Instead of calling it service revenue, we'll call it sales revenue because now we are selling goods. And now we're going to have this new expense called cost of goods sold. That's how much the item that we sold cost us. And that gets us to a subtotal called gross profit. And that shows how much um, money we got just by selling the uh, item for more. And that's the profit, um, again, that we gain from selling the inventory for more than we bought it for, and we can use that leftover amount to help cover other expenses. And then what is left over after we pay all of those expenses is called our net income. So it is very similar to a service company because it does have revenue minus expenses, but we have this subtotal that's new called gross profit. The balance sheet is also going to look very similar, except we're going to have this new account called Merchandise Inventory. And it's considered a current asset because we plan on selling it within the year. Okay, so let's look at the two types of inventory systems. One is called the Periodic Inventory System, and it requires a physical count of the inventory to see how much inventory we have left at the end of the period. A perpetual inventory system keeps a running computerized record of the inventory. 
So if you think about Walmart, each time that you check out at Walmart, they scan the item and that is automatically updating their inventory. So they are using a perpetual inventory system. If they used a periodic inventory system, they would just sell all of the goods and they would know how much inventory they had until it was counted. They would subtract to see how much was missing and this would be the amount of inventory sold. So these are the two types of inventory systems. All right, we're gonna learn the perpetual inventory system. So how do we purchase merchandise using a perpetual inventory system? First, we buy the merchandise from a vendor. An invoice is a seller's request for payment from a purchaser. So we'll receive an invoice. So we'll, sellers will have sales invoices and purchasers will have purchase invoices. Let's look at a purchase invoice. This invoice was shipped to Smart Touch Learning and the credit terms are 315 net 30 days. So we're going to talk about this in more detail and how to account for it. But basically it means that if you pay, you get a 3% discount if you pay within 15 days or it must be paid in full by 30 days. And then we have our the date of our invoice, and this is important. If we want to get the 3% discount, we want to make sure we pay within 15 days. If not, we need to make sure that we pay it within 30 days because that's when it's due. It says that we bought touchscreen tablet computers, and the amount that we bought was 100 computers. And they were 350 each for a total of $35,000. That is how much that we bought. And we bought that from Southwest Electronics Direct. All right, so what do we do? Well, we bought inventory. So inventory is an asset. So we debit merchandise inventory for the 35000 and we credit cash if we paid for this already. Now, if we didn't pay for it already, we would still debit merchandise inventory, but we would credit accounts payable instead of cash. So this purchase discount that was offered to us, this 3%, it means that we can take a 3% discount on the $35,000 if we pay it within 15 days. So what we'll do is when we go to pay it, we need to get rid of the entire accounts payable for 35,000, but we don't actually pay the 3% that we took a discount on. We're only gonna be paying 35,000 minus the 3% discount. So we're, we're gonna credit cash for 33,950. And we need to reduce our merchandise inventory because originally we put the whole amount of $35,000 um, as a debit to merchandise inventory. But we need to actually record inventory for the amount that we actually paid. So we need to reduce it by $1,050. So the rule is get rid of the whole amount that you put into accounts payable credit cash for the amount that you're going to pay. So I like to say 35,000 times 0.97 because you really only pay 97% because you got a 3% discount. And then if you do 35,000 minus 0 0.97, you would get 33,950. The difference is your discount and you need to take it out of merchandise inventory. So that's the journal entry if you take the discount. That journal entry makes your merchandise inventory be at the amount that you actually paid, the $33,950. Because you didn't pay $35,000, you ended up taking this $1,053% discount. So now that values your merchandise inventory at the amount that you paid, which was $33,950. Of course, you need to get rid of your entire accounts payable because you don't owe them at the end of it. Okay, let's say that we didn't take the discount, that we waited the whole 30 days and then we paid, or we waited past the 15 day mark and paid. 
the journal entry would be more simple because we don't have the discount. So we would simply, we would reduce our accounts payable by 35,000 and then we would credit cash for the full 35,000 because we do not have a discount. All right, now let's look for an invoice price for a purchaser that needs to be adjusted. Sometimes we return something. Sometimes we don't return something, but we say, hey, we have damage, we received damaged goods, so we need an allowance. That is, take off some of the money that I need to pay for this because it was damaged or it didn't come as it was expected. So if you return it, it's called a return. And if you knock off some money or they knock off some money, it's called an allowance. Okay, so on June 4th, Smart Touch Learning returns 20 tablets valued at a total of $7,000 from the June 1st purchase. So here's what we need to do. Reduce the amount that we owe them by 7,000. So we need to reduce accounts payable by 7,000. And then we're going to credit merchandise inventory. Since we returned 20 tablets, we need to reduce the inventory that we returned by 7,000. So now we owe them 7,000 less. Accounts payable has been reduced and we have $7,000 less of inventory. Purchase returns and allowances. On June 10th, Smart Touch Learning purchased 15 tablets on account with credit terms of $315 and $30 at a cost of $52.50. Five tablets are returned on June 15th for $17.50 and payment is made on June 20th. Let's look and see how we would journalize this. So when we first bought it, we would debit merchandise inventory and credit accounts payable for the whole amount. When we return some, we will reduce accounts payable and credit merchandise inventory for the amount returned. So when we get ready to go and pay, we look and see or we ask, how much do we owe them? Well, the best place to look is in our accounts payable account. We started out owing $52.50, but then we reduced accounts payable by $17.50. So we only need to pay them $3,500. So we reduced accounts payable by $3,500. So now it has a zero balance. That's how much we owe them, $3,500. And then it looks like we're actually going to pay this within 15 days. So we need to think about a discount. So cash needs to be 3,500 minus the 3% discount. So it would be 3,395 that we would pay. The 3,500 minus the 105, which is the 3% discount. And then we're gonna put the discount to merchandise inventory. Let me show you why that is. So originally we bought merchandise inventory for 52.50. We reduced it by the amount that we mailed back. Now we need to reduce it by the discount that we took because the rule is we only want to put into merchandise inventory what we actually paid. We knocked off $105, so we need to take that out. So that's why. Okay, other items that are on the invoice are shipping terms. That tells us who's responsible to pay shipping. There's two options, FOB shipping point and FOB destination. If it's FOB shipping point, that means the title of the goods changes hands at the shipping point. So that means once they ship it out, it already belongs to the buyer right at the shipping point. So let's say we're buying it. If it changes hands at the shipping point, it already belongs to us. So the whole time it is traveling to us, we are responsible for it. Therefore, we pay shipping. So that's why you'll hear FOB shipping point, the buyer pays the shipping or freight. So if it's FOB desti destination, it's the opposite. It belongs to the seller all the way down to us. And so in FOB destination, since the buyer owns it all the way to us, 
the seller pays the freight. So this is mostly important, first of all, because it determines who pays. And second of all, it changes what we debit and what we credit. When merchandisers are required to pay the shipping costs, it's called freight in because they had to pay for it to get the freight to them. Therefore, they're going to count this as part of the cost of the merchandise. However, if it's the seller having to pay for it, we're going to call it freight out. And that is because it is a selling expense. We are paying that freight to help us make the sale. So freight out is going to be accounted for differently than freight in. So if it's FOB shipping point, it changes hands right here at the shipping point. So the buyer pays. If it's FOB destination, it didn't change hands until it got to the buyer. So therefore, the seller will pay. Okay, if it is $60 freight, Smart Touch pays it. That means we paid it to get the merchandise to us. We're the buyer. So we're going to debit merchandise inventory because that freight uh, included the cost that we had to pay to get that inventory to us so that we could sell it. Debit merchandise inventory if the buyer pays. All right, if we paid it within a discount period, what's important to know here is that we never take a discount on freight. So you have to calculate your inventory with your discount and then add freight back on top because your freight is usually paid to a third party like UPS or FedEx. So your discount doesn't get taken on that freight charge. And this is just an entry showing the calculation is only on the 5,000, not the discount is only calculated on the 5,000, not on any freight charges. Okay, cost of inventory purchase. So knowing the net cost of inventory allows a business to determine the actual cost of the merchandise purchase. So here's how we calculate it. So it's the purchase cost of the inventory minus the purchase returns and allowances minus purchase discount plus freight in. That's the net cost of our inventory purchase. Okay, so during the year, Smart Touch Learning buys 281,750 of inventory, returns 61,250 of the goods, and takes the 4410 early payment discount. The company also pays 14,700 of freight in. So this is how we would calculate net costs. Okay, so purchases, less purchase returns and allowances, less purchase discounts, plus freight in, equals your net cost of inventory purchase. All right, let's look and see now. We bought all of our inventory and learn how to account for the purchase of that inventory. Now let's learn how to account for selling it. So our sales is going to be called sales revenue. We're going to have two entries for every sale. The first entry will record the sales revenue and the cash or the accounts receivable. So that's the sales price. The second entry will be because we use a perpetual inventory system and we account for inventory every time we make a sale. So we're going to credit merchandise inventory to show that it went out the door and then we'll debit cost of goods sold. Just like any other time that we had a deferred expense, this is recording the movement out of the asset, merchandise inventory, and into cost of goods sold, your expense. So cash and credit card sales are actually going to be treated the same. So let's look and see here. Exhibit 5.5 illustrates the invoice for two tablets sold for cash. So we sold two tablets for $1,000. So when we do this, 
we're going to show that we received cash and earned sales revenue of a thousand and we're going to show that those tablets originally cost us seven hundred dollars so we're going to debit cost of goods sold for 700 and credit merchandise inventory so the difference in the amount that we sold this for and the amount that we originally paid shows us our gross profit all right let's say we had a sale on account this time we debit accounts receivable and credit sales revenue for 2500 and those originally cost us 1750 so we move it out of merchandise inventory because we sold them and into cost of goods sold and that's going to help us match the expense into the same period that we sold the tablets that's why we do this we hold them in inventory until we sell them and once we sell them we move it out of, of the asset and record it as an expense so just like our vendors offered us discounts we're going to offer discounts to our customers to encourage them to pay earlier so there's new record revenue recognition standards and they require sales to be recorded at the net amount or the amount of the sales less any sales discounts so instead of us showing the full amount we're going to record the sale at net of the discount because we're going to assume that they're going to take the discount we're going to assume that they're going to pay us within the discount period and they're only going to pay us the 98 percent 100 percent less the two percent discount okay so here's how it works accounts receivable and sales revenue not for the whole amount so not for the full five thousand the 500 times 10 would be five thousand so we're going to record it less the discount the two percent discount so two percent of five thousand would be a hundred so we're going to record this at four thousand nine hundred five thousand less the one hundred dollar discount now this does not affect our merchandise inventory we always reduce it for the original price that we paid for it and they told us that the cost of the goods was 3500 so we move it out of inventory and into cost of goods sold so, so when the customer does make that payment within the discount period we simply say we got cash and we reduce the accounts receivable and we would be finished with that but if the customer didn't pay we would have to add the cash they paid us the full amount five thousand we would have to take away their accounts receivable for forty nine hundred and then credit an account called sales discount forfeited so that would show the amount that they did not take in a discount the one hundred dollars which is extra money to us the seller and it would go under sales discount forfeited so the return of goods by a customer so sometimes we sell goods and they were returned we have to estimate all of these under the new rec revenue recognition standard and so what we're going to do is we're going to decrease our sales revenue by an estimated amount of sales returns we don't know how many customers are going to return how much of the goods that we sell but we estimate it based on prior history so what we're going to do is smart touch learning has so smart touch learning has sales of one million dollars and cost of its sold of six hundred thousand dollars so we're going to estimate how much how much will be returned so what we estimate is that four percent will be returned here's what we're going to do we're going to debit sales revenue now that should ring an alarm bell in your head you should be thinking but we never debit sales revenue we always credit sales revenue but we're actually going to reduce the sales revenue by the amount that we are estimating um, that's going to be returned to us and we're going to credit a new account called refunds payable we have to set up an account out of which we will be giving those customers refunds because we know somebody always returns goods to us 
Okay, so we reduce our revenue and we add money to our refunds payable for this estimate. We also have to account for the inventory we know will come back to us. So we're going to call that estimated returns inventory. That's an asset, which is not a true number because it is an estimate. So it's debited for 24000 and then we reduce our cost of goods sold. So the net effect of this to our income statement is just the net of 40000 minus 24000 because at the same time that we reduced our sales, we also reduced the expenses associated with those sales. Now, so an actual return happens. Someone actually comes in and returns some inventory to us. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to reduce refunds payable, and we're going to credit cash. So we gave them their cash back. And we took that out of the account that we set up called refunds payable. And then we're going to show the inventory that they gave us back. So we're going to debit merchandise inventory and credit estimated returns inventory. So you can look at these as buckets. When we estimated at the very beginning, we said we need to set up an account called refunds payable and we credited an amount to it. We set up a bucket called estimated returns inventory and we put some money into that. Now every time an actual refund comes about, we'll be taking money out of our refunds payable and we'll be taking inventory out of estimated returns inventory and put it in to our real merchandise inventory because it got returned to us and now we have an opportunity to try to sell it again. All right, on January 28, 2020, Smart Touch Learning grants a $100 sales allowance for goods damaged in transit. The goods were sold on account and remain unpaid. So the goods were sold on account and remain unpaid. So we're gonna debit refunds payable and credit accounts receivable because this gives an allowance for those damaged goods. So here's what we're doing. We're saying, hey, you don't owe that $100, so we're going to take it out of your accounts receivable. And we're going to debit refunds payable because we're going to use up some of that bucket because it, because it goes towards returns and allowances. So this is what a lot of students got confused about when they think of accounts receivable. They think of a credit. Well, if you're the buyer and you call the seller and you get an allowance, the seller may say, we're going to credit your account. What they mean by that is we're going to credit your accounts receivable so you owe us less now. Now it's time to talk about freight out. So if we have to pay shipping or freight when we make a sale, we debit an expense because this is just a selling expense. We incurred this expense because it helped us make a sale. So if you're doing freight out, that means the seller is paying the freight. Then you debit delivery expense and credit cash to pay that bill. All right, so now we're going to talk about adjusting and closing the accounts of a merchandising business. So what happens is you sell and you account for all the inventory that you sold. And at the end of the year, even if you use perpetual inventory, you still have to do a physical count of inventory. And you will likely find that some is missing. It could be missing because it got lost or it didn't scan when you sold it because it got stolen or it got broken. So we call this inventory shrinkage. So we need to adjust merchandise inventory so it reflects exactly what we have when in our count, in our physical count. So when we do this, we are going to say our unadjusted balance was 31,530, but when we did a physical count, we only had 30,000. So we need to reduce the value of our inventory down to that 30,000. So we need to reduce 
merchandise inventory, so we credit it for fifteen thirty, and then we just consider it sold because that's an expense. So we need to move it into an expense. So we do cost of goods sold for fifteen thirty. This is going to update our merchandise inventory for the amount that we counted it to be. All right, closing the merchandise company's um, accounts are identical to any account. It's just now that we have now we have a new expense account to talk about, which is cost of goods sold. So we're going to make our revenue accounts be zero. So you would debit revenue and credit income summary. You make your expense accounts zero, including your new account cost of goods sold. So you debit income summary and credit the expenses. Then you make income summary equal zero. So if you're in a net income situation, you would debit income summary and credit capital. And then you close withdrawals to capital. So you would debit capital and credit withdrawals. So it's the exact same process as we learned before. So the accounts of our adjusted trial balance are shown here in the normal order. Assets, liabilities, owner's equity, revenue, and expenses. The new accounts are shown in blue. And the accounts that we would zero out during the closing process are shown down here. They're the two temporary accounts. So we close the revenue and we also close the sales discount forfeit account and the cost of goods sold account, as well as all the regular expense accounts. So these are the temporary accounts that we close and we also close uh, withdrawals. That's why we were able to draw this line and say all these accounts go down to zero. So then you're just left with your permanent accounts up here. So you never close assets, liabilities, and capital. And you always close revenues, expenses, and drawing. All right, so you can take a look at this. I've always, already summarized it earlier. Make sure that you can follow these few slides so you are familiar with the process and take some time to review it. All right, the last objective is financial statements. All right, so earlier we talked about a single step and a multi-step income statement. So the single step would look like this. You would list out all your revenues. Then you would list out all your expenses and then get net income by taking revenue minus your expenses. In a multi-step income statement, we're going to break it down a little bit into different sections. We're going to have our revenues and then we're going to take out our cost of goods sold right up here in the front. And that gets us to gross profit. Then we're going to split out our expenses into two types. Operating is going to have selling and administrative under it. And then we would have all other income and expense items. So let's talk about what that means. What that means is operating expenses consist of two types. Selling. Everything to do with selling. How can we tell if it has to do with selling? Well, usually it's going to give us some pretty big hint. Or if we work for the company, we would know, hey, that's a selling expense. Salaries expense, if they are related to the selling aspect of it, then that would be a selling expense. Advertising is always selling. Delivery is always selling. Other items that are administrative are usually items that happen in the corporate office. So you would have to ask the question, did it happen in the corporate office? If so, it's administrative. Other income and expenses include sales discounts forfeited and interest expense. 
and then you net that down to get net income. Statement of owner's equity for merchandise and service companies are similar, if not identical. The balance sheet just has two new accounts, merchandise inventory and estimated returns inventory. All right, and we always end with a percentage or a ratio to help us evaluate financial statements. So we're going to talk about the gross profit percentage. So it is equal to gross profit divided by net sales, revenue. It measures the profitability of each sales dollar above the cost of goods sold. So what we want is a high gross profit percentage. Okay, so let's look at, it, at an example of this. So we would take net sales minus cost of merchandise sold because that gets us to gross profit. And then we would divide that by net sales. And that would give us our ratio. So in this one, we can see in 2015 that we had 36.4%. In 2016, it went down slightly to 36.1%. This means that we have a negative trend. So we want to continue to watch this to make sure it doesn't keep going negative as time goes on. Because the higher this ratio is, the better our business is doing. Net 